What is poppin' squad? It's your boy Jeff Sammy, and today we have ourselves a top five tips to maximize the efficiency of your D3 in PvP. Now, before I get this list started, I want you guys to know that D3 is easily by far uh, top three builds. If it if, if it's not one, two, it's definitely three, no matter what. Uh, there's nothing I see above it in team situations and solo situations and PvE situations. I just think the build is amazing as is, especially in this meta with uh, very, very minimal healing. I think D3 shines. So first things first, tip number one, and this is my most favorite tip of all. And I always tell people this when they ask me how I run my D3, and that is run 100% camera sensitivity. And the reason is because a lot of people run like this. So when they were to D3, this is how they move, right? I don't know why their sensitivity are this low, but all you have to do is run around them and boom, that's that. But with 100 sensitivity, it's really hard for an agent to get behind you, especially at medium range. Like let's say they're at where this brick is at. By the time they try to get around, it's extremely hard for them to get around and face tank long enough to be able to do any subsequential damage to you. So I think a lot of people have this problem uh, where it's low sensitivity because they feel like they can't aim like that. But with D3, you got to realize this. Um, looking at your opponent is everything. You want to keep your eyes on the opponent. You have to have um, your awareness up on like maximum because you are very important to the team. You want to get those buffs off. You want to try to soak up as much damage as possible by gaining natural aggro, right? Because when some players like seeing D3s and they don't even try to focus them, right? But you need to get in their face and get annoying to the point where they have to take you seriously and thus those procs come. So obviously running high sensitivity is one good thing because if they do decide to try to flank you to try to get you out of the equation, you can kind of look at them, you know what I'm saying, and keep it going. So a lot of people are going to say, well, I can't handle that. Well, in theory, you're not really using that to aim. So you're using, that's why I say camera sensitivity. Your aim sensitivity can stay wherever you want because obviously the speeds are different. Like right here, when I'm not aiming down sight, I can spin around and go crazy, right? They can't get behind me. But if I'm shooting, it slows down. And obviously you want to be in positions. If you're shooting, you want them to be in front of you. And if they try to go, you stop shooting and you get in position. That's how you're supposed to run D3. Do not try to hit fire. Do not do that. If you're going to shoot with D3, having, having the sensitivity, aim down sight because if you try to hit fire the speed is going to be at the 100 and some of you guys can't handle that and i understand that so that's tip number one okay tip number two and a lot of people don't do this and i don't know why uh maybe it's because it's just something that i've developed but when you get that proc and your shield is low don't sit there and let them just beam your shield do not be afraid to start strafing to start moving around you know to, to start putting damage on if you can use your cover you know what i'm saying a lot of people like like you situations like this right your shield doesn't have to take damage when you're like this it's, it's like natural cover use your cover when your shield's low and run around when you have that buff on if you don't want your shield to get destroyed because once your shield is destroyed it's really really hard for you to be effective on your team you're, you're pretty much relying on your toughness at that point and how long you can stay alive because your dps isn't going to be that amazing because you're not gonna be able to stop and face tank now before I get into this, and a lot of people may disagree, I honestly think that with D3, as much as you want to play hyper-aggressive, right? You want to play in people's faces. You want to play hardcore because you feel you have unlimited toughness. No, that's not how you play D3 efficiently. You play D3 based off that buff, right? So in funneling situations where you get somebody in a hallway, like this, I use this for example, this is when it's good to face tank, right? You face tank until your shields, I don't know, half health or a little bit lower half health and you retreat but some players love to run in and try to take all because they know they could take the damage and you pretty much jeopardize the flow of your team the ideal situation when somebody's rushing is you once you get your buff you start taking cover and then you play it off you know what i'm saying that's how you optimize your shields lifespan that's how you optimize the buffs because what happens is a lot of players get one buff and then once they get that buff, they get overconfident and they rush and they end up losing their shield, which could have been a whole nother buff once that one was gone. So that's that's just something that I personally feel uh, that players really deal with. And I think that that's something that can be easily changed once you change your habits. Now, tip number three, and this is another tip that kind of it almost contradicts it, but at the same time, it doesn't. Now, when your shield is knocked away, a lot of people are going to think, oh, well, you're pretty much useless. No, you're still a valuable player um, based off your toughness and obviously if you're running it the right way at 9k stamina you're going to be tanky so do not stop shooting somebody and do not disengage from the battle because you're waiting until your show comes back if you do that you're pretty much dooming your team as far as toughness and i think a lot of players end up 
running around in circles and not even putting up even though they can pretty much do some good damage maybe even finish some kills off uh they're too worried about getting that d3 shield back and if they don't get it all of a sudden you know they they just lose all intent on fighting do not be that person you have to be the person that is going to engage that's going to be good and be able to come right back into the battle if not stay in the battle the whole time because once your shield comes back out even if you're like at 25 percent of your health you're pretty much safe all right and tip number four always be the person that's rushing in front of your teammate your teammates follow you you do not follow your teammates it defeats the whole purpose uh the first person that the enemies see is the per first person they're gonna beam i promise you um what you want to do is you want it to have a little space between you and your team you want to have i don't know maybe like a meter space where you're in front so that they have to focus you they're not just going to completely ignore you let them put that free bullets into you and then that's going to proc your buff and it's going to have your teammates being able to push behind you and be able to capitalize before they're even in the gunfight already having that buff and obviously during as the fight goes you'll be able to have that buff longer because you're gonna have that multiple procs now the cool thing about that feature and the cool thing about like that strategy is even though players know not to shoot the shield most players know if we shoot this shield we're giving them a buff that's going to make them unkillable while this buff is up if you as a d3 put yourself in position smart right like i said do not uh do what i told you which was run into a situation where you're going to get destroyed but i'm saying as far as pushing that's different than putting yourself and being hyper aggressive obviously you're going to have situational awareness and you're going to know what situations but do not be the person that overextends be the person that does a smart push because smart push and there's a fine line between that and overextending if you play it smart you get the focus but you're not not so much so that you're going to get destroyed whereas like i told you with overextending you're putting yourself in a major focus where your shield gets ripped you get ripped that yeah you know what i'm saying you don't want to be like that get to a position where you can push where it's safe enough get that proc then you can let your shield down because remember when when you have it set down you're immortal if you have over half health you're immortal it's like having a defense you're good so do not overextend but be able to do a smart push with your shield that's going to allow you and your team to be able to have that buff when they go into a situation. So that's just something you need to look forward to. And the last and final tip is exactly how you build it. Now, this is super important. I don't know why players have questioned me, like, why is your shield so tanky? I'm telling you right now, you only need two things for your shield to be tanky. And number one, that's to have 9,000 stamina, which gives you that 200% health increase on your shield, which makes it immortal. So if you basically have 8,900, which I've seen build, people have asked me this and sent their build, and I had to tell them. They forget, maybe because they just think it only applies to um, Striker and Pred, but no. D3 was one of those that stamina has to be implemented for it to be maximum potential. So you have to run 9,000 stamina. Do not listen to anybody else. Anybody else who says do not run 9,000 stamina is lying to you and they're cheesing you out of being able to use your build. Run 9,000 stamina and also, don't forget, people think just because they're in 9,000 stamina that their shield's going to be amazing. No, you want to cap your skill power around 125 and that's going to be able to give you the maximum potential of that shield. If you do not run skill power, you will feel an extreme difference in the health of your shield because skill power does apply to your shield and it has a soft cap uh, or I don't know if it's soft or hard or whatever you call it. Basically, 125 minimum. That's what you want to have. I had 120 before and I realized you can do an extra 5,000. That's what you want to do. Maximize that shield. So these two things, stamina at 9,000, electronics at 126. It doesn't matter what your electronics itself is at. Just make sure that you get it to 126 skill power. Whether that be by having mods that give you uh, skill power or you run electronic. However you want to do it, just make sure you get that 125 skill power. And that's pretty much it, you guys. That's all you need to know the pretty much everything else stems on its own um your skill gets applied and the fact that the build kind of plays itself in a way because you're tanky um d3 is an amazing build this is something that a lot of people enjoy and you know some people are, are, are calling a little bit too strong and i i would understand why but at least that these players are, are getting some some love um throughout the dz because d3 is extremely strong so hopefully you guys um enjoyed this and this these tips actually apply to you and you know try them out let me know what you guys think let me know if they actually made you a better d3 player because they definitely made me a better one so it's been real thank y'all so much for watching your boy is out bonus commentary for the people who stay to the end of the video i want to ask you guys do you guys like these tip videos is this something you guys want to see with every build 
if so let me know in the comments if you type this in the comments i know that you actually watched the whole video so i appreciate you and i just wanted to announce that i'm going to be trying to expand my channel i don't know in what direction but i want to know if you guys think i should do it on this channel or should i start a second channel for multi games you know what i'm saying like division will always 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 be my number one but would you guys want me to do split right so i do all games on my channel but focus on division or should i do a whole entire channel and just have this channel 100 percent completely dedicated to division and division content only it's just something i want to ask you guys just let me know what you guys think i'm super curious about it you know what i'm saying i've been thinking about it for a while now and kind of been procrastinating because you know it's just really hard to decide so let me know what you guys think in the comments and please support your boy when i try this because it's definitely it's definitely hard out here so it's been real thank y'all so much and thank you for actually watching the rest of the video i love y'all man appreciate you squad up your boy is out